Ellen, because of all these restrictions, we are feeling confined in our homes and that can really take a toll on our mental health. So I recently spoke with Dr. Ken Hopper. He's a psychiatrist with Armor Health and he deals on a daily basis with those that are incarcerated, but his advice can help any of us that feel confined during this pandemic. Dr. Hopper, thanks so much for being here. This is a strange time for all of us as we're feeling confined in our homes. I know you work with those um, that are incarcerated, but how can we take those tools and tips that you use and apply them in our own lives? Where do we start? Well, it's great to be with you today. And uh, this is such an important topic that it just really uh, makes me feel good to be talking to the public about it. And uh, so the first uh, tip that I would have is really what we tell people that even coming into the incarceration setting. Uh, you know, when I work with individuals, uh, the first thing I say is keep your plans and your goals simple. And part of that is, as you will see the other tips, is to really make it to where they can optimize the situation they're in. Well, we're in a pandemic. Those individuals obviously are having a big life change. So it's really, there's a commonality there. You know, we don't know when the uh, country will reopen. We don't know when we'll be able to go to an event or, or a concert or just travel. So how do we stop focusing on that and just use our day to day and focus on that? Well, you really always plan for the short term with the background for the long term. And uh, this is really, again, universally true, but very important to keep in mind when we're going through a big change. We have to first say, I've got to do what I can do today. <clears throat> how can I keep part of that alive? How do I keep socialization, maybe even trying some electronic versions of doing that alive so I don't miss out? It's not an all or nothing. Knowing that, of course, the goal is to get back to those activities and uh, they will come. They will come particularly if we focus on the short term plans in context of that larger goal. A lot of us maybe had booked trips for the fall. I know we have for the summer and just talking to the kids and they're wondering, well, what are we going to do if we can't fly? What are we going to do if we can't do this? I mean, how do we kind of just calm those fears and just say, you know, yes, we're taking it one day at a time, but we still want something to look forward to. Yeah. Well, this is, uh, this is how these points really do merge one with the other. So the, the next point <clears throat> that I make is around the fear multiplier. So avoid the fear multiplier, which relates to short and long term. And that is uh, the what ifs. You said it well. Your children said it well, which is what if we can't. So the what ifs happen to us all the time. Sometimes they happen so automatically we don't even know it. You know, so the snowballing effect can happen with what ifs. Uh, so it is, you know, piece, taking a piece of information, which is, you know, this pandemic is a big thing. It's changing our lives and we have certain things we're, we're dealing with. So then taking that into the what ifs, it doesn't go away. What if it's not resolved correctly? So what ifs really can trap us into non-action? Well, and everybody's getting a little antsy. I know not just us as adults want to socialize, but the kids want to socialize Absolutely. too. Mm -hmm. I never thought I'd hear my kids say they miss going to school. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, some strange things happen. I think there's a lot of reflection that is happening in our society, you know, and in fact, that is one of the not intended advantages, but you know, there is a saying, make, uh, making lemonade out of lemons. And uh, so that phenomena can be uh, kind of something we do need to capitalize on. And it really does fit into the last point I wanted to make uh, of these four, which is remember, remember there is a positive end date. So keeping that positivity allows us to not get bogged down with the fear multiplier, get into mixing up short and long-term goals, not keeping things simple. All the things prior that I talked to really roll up to this positive end date. You know, and along the way, we might be able to say, you know, this is interesting. I value some things I used to not value. What a lesson in making that positive end date actually even more robust or more strong than what we thought it would be. We always maybe took some things for granted and now we're really learning to appreciate them. The biggest is uh, that in big things like this, uh, there are some steps that we can take, uh, you know, following uh, Pre President Roosevelt saying that all we have to fear is fear itself in this aspect uh, that we're talking about. If we were able to focus, if we're able to keep things in perspective and know there'll be a better outcome by all of that, you know, there's gonna be advantage. And this is literally what we tell our 
individual, and I tell our individual patients at Armour Health in the correctional setting. To learn more from Dr. Harper, Hopper, you can check out Armour Health Services online or social media, armorcorrectional.com. Thanks for those tips, Dr. Hopper.